Voice in the Wilderness, Internet Radio. Enlightening the world every week. It's not just knowing about the doctrine in the Bible. That is not what we stand for here. Streaming powerful biblically-based messages live and down the internet. This congregation may never be gathered together again as we see it. Voice in the Wilderness, Internet Radio. Enlightening the world every week. Good evening. Welcome to Voice in the Wilderness Internet Radio. We are streaming live down the internet from London. This show is dedicated to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. On tonight's show, we will discuss the question, how do we enter into God's rest? We will be studying what the Bible teaches. Our guest speaker is based in London, England. More about our guest after we've heard some music. this land and everywhere I go people's hearts are filled with fear for a future they don't know they don't seem to understand there's only one way to place their lives in Jesus us hands and come to him today I want them to meet Jesus he's a friend above all friends he'll never forsake them his love knows no end no matter what they've to save them from their sin are you secure in the life that you live or are you lost and confused you search and struggle for that peace of mind and you don't know what to do let me introduce you now friend of 
How do we enter into God's rest? We will discuss this question tonight with Brother Gerald Graham. Have a pen and paper ready to write down some notes. Let's now call Brother Gerald and see if he is available. Hello. Good, good evening, Brother Gerald. Yes, Brother Gerald. Yes, good evening. You are live on the Voice in the Wilderness Internet Radio. How are you this evening, Brother Gerald? I am fine, thank you. I am fine. fine. Praise the Lord. I'm grateful for your opportunity you've given me to address your audience. Right. Yes. yes. Well, Brother Gerald, Brother Gerald, tonight we'll be discussing these questions together. What is God's rest? Who was God's rest given unto? Why was God's rest given to mankind? What benefits of God's rest do the scriptures teach us? And did the ancient Israel understand how to enter into God's rest? So, Brother Gerald, before we start the discussion, shall we have a word of prayer together tonight, please? Yes, by all means. Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for every opportunity we have to study your word. We pray as we do so that your Holy Spirit will open our minds to the truths that are found therein. And that he will give us the understanding that we need to improve our lives. Gain a greater understanding of where we ought to be and the part we play on this earth. And as a result of the changes that are wrought in our lives. That God, you, may be glorified. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brother Gerald, what does the Bible say is God's rest? Okay. Well, I the, the first encounter that I find in the Word of God that speaks about rest is that which is found in the book of Genesis, chapter 2, and yes. verse. And we read there that on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. And proceeding that, we we have an account of the wonderful work of God's creation. Yes. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 1, we told that God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. So God began God's creation. In day one, we saw that God created the two atmosphere and the firmament. They created the ground, the ground and plants. Day four, day five, birds and sea creatures. Day six, land, animals, and humans. Right. It's and then we come back to Genesis chapter 2, where we're told that God rested the seventh day and from all the works that he had done. Right. So, so when we look at this, we, we 
Hold on, excuse me. So, okay. So the rest that we um, um, encounter in the, in the Word of God. And we know that, um, you know, it's important that we quote this correctly. It doesn't say that God needed to rest. Right. It says that God did rest. Right. And it's clear from the scripture that God does not need to rest because he doesn't tire. And that in Genesis chapter 17, in fact, and verse 1, it calls God the almighty God. Right. And in Psalm chapter 1, verse 7, verse 5, it says God is great and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. And also in Isaiah verse 28, it says that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth, neither faints nor is weary. God is some Yes, sorry, Brother Gerald. Yes, Brother Gerald, can you hear me? Diminished in power. So when we go, can, hello. Yes, Brother Gerald. Yes, we're losing your signal. I don't know if oh, um if you're using a hands for your Bluetooth headset, but yes, we're losing your signal. Sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. I would try to um get in a position where the signal. Yes, I do have low signal here, but I will try to get in a position where right the signal bar increases. I apologize for yeah, that. Yes, so that's fine. Yes, it's sounding better now. Yes, so okay. ca- carry on, please. Okay, so when the first Sabbath came to earth, um, in reality, um, only God had worked for the previous six days. Right. The, the angels, um, though they looked on in awe and admiration, they did not create. And though Adam came on the, on the sixth day of creation, in reality, and though he did work, his work in best was part of a day in naming the animals. Right. So, um, in reality, it was God, God's day of rest. It was his rest day. Right. Um, so, hence, um, the appropriateness of the Bible statement in um, Exodus chapter 20 and verse 10. It says yes. that the Sabbath day is the Sabbath of the Lord. And in Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 11, it yes. is referred to as my rest or God's rest. So it is God's rest. So when we go back to the, the, the question that what is God's rest? It is the rest that he went through and performed on the seventh day of creation. Okay, right. Now, we're not told that we're told that um God did not merely rest. Um, because oftentimes when we think about ourselves, we, we can rest without finishing um, what we have done. But in this case, God finished what he had done. And when he looked at everything, he said it was not only good, but he said it was very good. Right. So God's rest in reality is God's ideal of perfect life. Yes. Perfect union. Right love joy and peace and it's all found in the expression of that first sabbath in eden okay so let's pause it there please so what but what brother Gerald is sharing with us is that god's rest is his holy sabbath the seventh day sabbath and it's a day that we were commanded not to work upon and it's also the day where as brother Gerald is basically stating where he expresses his 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 perfect love. Is that right? But um, towards his creatures. That's correct. That's correct. And more than more than that, he also invites us, and he yes. pleases us to enter into this rest with him. Yes. And we found that in the Book of Hebrews. But when in the Book of Hebrews he says it, he definitely points back to the Edemic Sabbath. Um, to to define to define sorry what he means by rest stating that my rest was the one he entered into when the works were finished from the foundation of the world and such and as such right. um, invites us into into that rest yes. yes brother Gerald can we go to the book of Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 15 because I just would like also to share this with the listeners to add to what you're, you've been sharing 
Isaiah chapter 13, verse 15. And when you're there, I'll, I'll read this text. 13, verse 15. Yes. 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 Well, it says here, For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength, and ye would not. And so from this Bible verse, the Bible explains that God's rest is the quietness and confidence that we have in him when we allow him to save us from our sins. It's the peace that comes from renouncing and overcoming evil. And again, this points us back to the seventh day Sabbath and to the day that God set aside because in essence, listeners, as Brother Gerald has been sharing with us, God's calling us to rest in him. Especially one day a week are we to find that rest in him, that strength in him, that quietness and that confidence. And so I just thought to add this Bible text as well, you see. And um, this concept we will build upon as we're both discussing this question tonight. Now, who was God's rest given unto, Brother Gerald? Okay, who was it given to? Okay, we looked at Genesis 1. It tells us how God created the earth. Genesis 2. Yes. It notes reflections. Okay. It further explains in Exodus chapter 16. Yes. Um, again, in the context of resting on the seventh day after the full uh, week's work. Now, this is the time of um, his people, Israel. And this was right after Israel were free from slavery. Yes. God was helping them to become more of an organized principal nation. And a big focus of that transformation, of that transition, was to establish a new work ethic for them because they were slaves, if we, if we right. recall. Right. They worked from dawn to dusk every day with little regard to their well-being. So God reminded them of the Sabbath that it was necessary piece um, of a consist to be have a consistent work schedule. Right. So, um, so this was something that he familiarized or wanted to re-educate the Israelites after having come from slavery. Yes. They were to come back to him in all his precepts, in which included the most important rest, the Sabbath day rest, as part of his commandments with them. Right. We also know that he gave them the Ten, Ten Commandments um, later on in Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 to 11, that records it. And But further than that, though it was given to Israel specifically, we are told the Word of God plainly tells us that the Sabbath is to all men. Right. Okay. So after Israel settled in the land and they got established as a nation, they continued to observe the Sabbath. Um, in fact, in verse and in, in Psalm chapter ninety-two, we're told that yes. there is songs of the Sabbath. And when the temple was built by Solomon, we read that the priests and the helpers prepared the showbread and temple, and they changed it every Sabbath. So we right. see that there's a continual observance of the Sabbath by um, God's people. And it says also the Sabbath was for the non-Israelites, is what the Bible tells us. Yes. So though God gave the Sabbath to be entrusted to the Israelites, the Bible plainly tells us that it was not only for them, they were to hold these principles and to share these principles with the rest of the world. So that Sabbath blessing was not to be hoarded by the Israelites or um, and to be enjoyed by them exclusively, but God intended that the nations around them but also to experience the rich blessings of the Sabbath. And we see that in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 10. Right. Okay. And this was also in fulfillment of the promise given to Abraham that his descendants would be a source of blessings to the families of the earth, which is recorded in Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3. Right. So, so we see also it's plainly stated in the book of Isaiah where um, it's, Isaiah chapter 56 and verses 1 through to 9, um, where it says that, I may not read all of it, but it says, um, states that, Thus saith the Lord, keep justice and do righteous, for my salvation is about to come and my righteousness 
is to be revealed. Blessed is a man who does this and the son of the man who lays hold of it, who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Do not let the son, sorry, do not let the son of the foreigner who has joined himself to the Lord speak saying the Lord has utterly separated me from his people, nor let the eunuch say, here I am a dry tree. For thus saith the Lord to the eunuch who keeps my Sabbath and chooses what pleases me and holds fast my covenant, even to them I will give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than that of sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. So the Bible plainly tells us that though the oracles where the Sabbath, where the law was um, written on, was given to the Israelites. It was not for them to be have exclusively, but they were to share this wonderful um, right. blessing with those who were, were around them. Yes, and again, um, can we also go to Mark chapter two, verse twenty to twenty-eight, because we looked at this um, last week, but again, just. Adding on to what Brother Gerald has shared, and we're bringing all this information together because that's what this radio show is about, is to give biblical evidence um, of God's truth. Mark chapter 2, verse 20, 20, um, sorry, 27 to 28, excuse me. And um, let me just get this reference right. Mark chapter 2. And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. And so the scriptures make it plain that the Sabbath was made for man, that word man being mankind. And as Elder um, Gerald has just stated to us, that the scriptures show in various parts that God had commanded Israel that they were not the only ones alone who were to benefit from the Sabbath blessings, but also, as, as he shared, from the book of Isaiah, the sons of the stranger. So we see the type of God that rules in heaven, that he's not exclusive. He's offering his salvation and his blessings to the whole of the human race. So, Brother Gerald, now, uh, why was God's rest given to mankind? Well, I will make this one very simple and very short. And I'll base my answer on Isaiah chapter 58. Yes. And verse it says, if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from the holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own way, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Yes. Basically, in short, the Sabbath was to be a blessing. It's not simply stopping. It isn't only, the Sabbath isn't only about not doing. God wants us to get the full effect of this day of rest. Right. He wants it to be a delight to us. So why was God's blessing, why was God's rest given to mankind? Because God knows that if we fully partake of this gift that he has given us, yes. it will be a delight to um, his people. Yes. 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 And again, um, shall we go to Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 to 11? Because we're building up a scripture picture scriptural evidence and we we know many who are listening will will know this fourth commandment by heart but many may not and so we'll take our time and are you there brother gerald yes i yes because we, we we covered this at the beginning but again it's good to reiterate and because it says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Lord says, remember, six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. In it thou shalt not do any work, 
thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Now the Lord explains the reason why we're to remember the Sabbath day. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth to see and all that in them is, as you started off with us in the beginning this evening, and rested the seventh day. So the Lord is pointing us to his creative works, you see. So um, as Brother Gerald said, God wants us to, to delight in the Sabbath. The reason being is that he's our creator, and he wants us to behold the wonderful things that he's made for us and that he will do for us, you see. And so it's just to give us the time to learn of our creator, really. And so, listeners, we've spoken about the Sabbath, we've shared about the Sabbath over the past few weeks, and I do pray that those who are new to either learning about the Sabbath or who have not even kept the Seventh-day Sabbath before, we would encourage you to take out that step by faith and to keep the Sabbath day holy, that seventh day, and we can guarantee that you receive the blessings that God has promised when you are obedient to his commandments. And this moves us on to the next question, Brother Gerald. What benefits of God's rest do the scriptures teach us? Okay, benefits of God's rest. Well, we know that um, rest is an, is an important thing Yes. in, um, in all our lives. In fact, one of the things that um, some of the things that we are told in the types or just just from a health principle, you know, physical yes. rest, sensory rest, mental rest, emotional rest, all helps us in our improvement of health. And, you know, improves our memory, helps with learning, live long lifespan and all these different things. So rest is very important for us. Yes. But the teacher, the scripture also teaches us that there are uh, additional um, benefits in health above the, the, the um, physical health. It teaches us that um, in mental and physical and that spiritual health is also um, important yes. and all brought about as a result of, of, of rest. Now, if you look at some of the scriptures, for instance, um, if we're plain and simple, proper rest reduces stress, that's intentional, dedicated to rest. And if we look at some scriptures, for instance, in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28, Christ says, come unto me, all that are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Now, that's one of the principles that is laid down in the word of God, that right. God is willing to give you rest. Now, that goes beyond just the Sabbath rest, but it just shows that Jesus is willing to give us that rest. We could look at further examples in the Bible. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24. Right. It, says, it says, no man can serve two masters. It says, either he, is, he hates one and loves the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and wealth. Yes. Now, how does it directly relate to the Sabbath? You know, some of us work, are willing to work and work and work and work and devote ourselves to the things of this life, even working all manners all week. Yes. But God says we cannot serve the world and him at the same time. We have to have our priorities right. Yes. And what the Sabbath does, it brings us, it brings that priority right. It says, leave off a period of time. This is specifically for God. We cannot serve two masters and God has to be our priority. Yes. There's also there's also um, examples um, we've read about the fourth commandments. You looked at it just a little while ago in Acts, in Exodus chapter twenty verses ten and eleven. Um, it says the the Sabbath rest isn't just for people; it's for all people, even the strangers, even the animals, you know. Um, and as a result of that, it brings about a better um, everybody is to enjoy the, the Sabbath, and it brings about a better community spirit as well. Yes, right. We look at Psalms chapter 46 and verse 10. It invites us, it says, we are invited to be still and know that he is God. Right. But we need regular time of to be quiet, our minds, and look to God's handiwork in all the things around us. Yes. 
we need that time. It's important for us. Yes. No, we Brother Gerald. Yes, yes, sorry. This is an important point, and I just believe that we should pause there because, you know, in this world that we're in, especially this modern world, everyone's rushing around, rushing right. around, rushing to get up to work, rushing to, you know, to eat, rushing to drink. No one really seems to take their time and think about life. And so I'm glad that you've brought this point out to us this evening because this is another reason, don't um, you agree that the Lord has given us this time so that we can just stop and think and contemplate on him? Yes, yes, indeed, indeed. You know, so um, I, w- I also would like to share and um, the book of Joshua, chapter 21, and verses 44 to 45. And I looked at this as I was preparing for the show tonight, and I just thought to share this with the listeners, in addition to what Brother Gerald shared with us today. And that's Joshua chapter 21, verses 44 to 45. And it says here, And the Lord God gave them rest round about, according to all that he swore unto their fathers. Now, Look at what this rest entails. And there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hand. There failed not aught of any good thing which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel. All came to pass. And so the Lord explains to us here that when we rest in him, he will protect us from all our enemies and... Nothing will fail of any good thing which is spoken unto us, you see. And I've sh- when I looked at this text, it, it, it reminded me of, of the text that you shared in the book of Isaiah, you see. Yeah. So can we see how there's many blessings and privileges that God's people can partake of if they would simply submit their lives and hearts to, to God and to Jesus, really, because Jesus is the creator, and, and and our redeemer and so listeners you see there's so much god wants to do for us and as our savior he will not only save us from our sins but if we live a life that's pleasing to him he will also save us from all our enemies no one will be able to touch us you know but that that's something else that we will look at um in a future time so um so anyway and spending yes. that time with, spending that time with God, you know, it it it, it promotes a closer relationship with God. Yes, most definitely, it promotes a more prayer um active prayer life. Yes, it um you know, and, and it's a perfect time for Bible study. Yes, you know, um, you know, the Bible yes. talks about in Matthew chapter eighteen and verse twenty that there that um where two and three are gathered in His name, it says there He is amongst them. Yeah. So, you know, we have the benefits of being able to stop, stay still, reflect on God, read his word, find an atmosphere that's conducive to, you know, spirituality, you know, and have that restorative power, um, you know, as a result of that. Yes. And this is the, the matter now, isn't it, really, Brother Gerald? It's our choice. God yes. gives us the free will to choose whether we would like to honor his Sabbath and to rest and spend that time in Bible study, in prayer, in fellowship, or whether we desire to do our own thing, you see. And so um, yes. this the choice is ours. And now, just finally now, moving on, because this moves us on now to our next question. Did ancient Israel understand how to enter into God's rest? Mm. Now, ancient Israel have a quite a history and it's not always straightforward. Um, we know that God, you know, gave a promise to Abraham, he had yes. a son Isaac, you know, to Jacob and to Jacob and his, his many sons going into Egypt um, because of the famine and having the 12, 12 tribes and then their legacy sort of being lost. Right. And being brought into captivity and slavery into Egypt until they led out 
um, by Moses into the, to the land of promise, um, into Canaan. So we see they have um, quite a, a history of going in and out of slavery. We see further on down the line right. that, again, because of their disobedience to God, you know, um, God's people were again taken into captivity, um, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, and so forth. And also we see as a result of their history, um, up when they split into two nations, um, the, the right. north and the south, um, on the different rulers, um, that's a, it's a lot of history, but um, I can't look at everything on the different rulers. They're, 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 um, they were either, according to their leaders, and they're adhering to God, they either were went astray, and sometimes they, according to the, the leaders, they were on track. Yes. Okay. Brother Joe, can we pause there, please, and just look at these two concepts um, for, with, with the people? Because I would just like the listeners to see from the Bible exactly what you've said. So where they were obedient, where they had rest, we looked at this. Let's go to First Chronicles 22, verse 9, again. Because again, because again two, yes, First Chronicles chapter 22 and verse 9. Because there are many who are listening who may not have opened their Bibles for some time. And... Um, or, or who may never even have looked at this. So here we see now, as Brother Gerald said, this is where there was a time where Israel were in Egypt. It says there, Behold, a son shall be born to thee, who shall be a man of rest, and I will give him rest from all these enemies round about, for his name shall be Solomon, and I will give peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. You see? And, and that's when Solomon was a wise and godly ruler. The Lord had said that this would happen. But now, now, as Brother Gerald said, there was a contrast in the book of Lamentations, chapter 1 and verse 3. That's the book of Lamentations, chapter 1 and verse 3. And yes, sorry, Brother Gerald, I'll, I'll um, just pause for a minute or two. For um, So, yes, Lamentations, chapter 1 and verse 3. Now, it says, Judah is gone into captivity because of affliction. And because of great servitude, she dwelleth among the heathen. Now here she findeth no rest. You see? All yes. her persecutors overtook her between the straits. So, as Brother Gerald said, when you study the history of ancient Israel, there were periods of time when they were obedient and they had rest and quietness. But when they were disobedient, they had no rest. And... You know, um, Brother Gerald, I, I, I shall, um, let's carry on, please. Okay. So, so, yeah, so we have many examples of this happening through the scripture. And um, we also, as a result of their disobedience, we are, as we also said earlier, they went into, also went into captivity. Yes. So even the Babylonian captivity, which we find um, um, even in the book of Second Kings chapter twenty three when it's um this prediction of this and the law says take heed to yourself and bear no burden on the sabbath day nor bring it sorry um so i'm, I'm going to wrong son he explains right. okay so so yeah so we see many different examples of where they were obedient and where they were not disobedient and when they came out of captivity we are told um also the sabbath had to be restored to his people and this was under the leader of Zerubbabel and right. and Ezra now I said I know this is a lot and I don't know if you want me to read these scriptures because they're quite a lot and the history people might not know but I but I could give you some reference you could read in Ezra chapter 3 verses 1 to 7 right or chapter 6 verses 13 to 18 and verses and and also um chapters 9 through to 10 yes um, okay yeah, so, you see, so, listeners, I do pray that after going through the scriptures and hearing this discussion this evening, that it can be understood that God's the rest that God gives to us is his seventh-day Sabbath, his holy Sabbath day. And Israel, at times, when, when they were obedient to God, they entered into his rest, but when they were disobedient, they had f found no rest. And this is the basic principle 
that God is teaching us, that rest is found in him when we simply submit our minds and hearts to his love, because God is love. And so we're going to have a break with some music now, and then we'll come back and round off with some thoughts. How do we enter into God's rest? Brother General, Brother Gerald, sorry, excuse me. Yes. Closing thoughts for this evening, please. I would like to just reflect on the first Sabbath after God created Adam and Eve. And I would like to think that the Sabbath became to Adam symbolic of rest with God a time of perfect communion, of oneness with God. I can imagine that Adam never forgot his first Sabbath. Oh, sorry, Adam and Eve never forgot their first Sabbath with God. And that they would recount this, you know, to their children and to their children's children. So it was um, the one commandment that God chose to honor by joining man in its observance, or perhaps better, inviting man to join him in its observance. It is the one command that he communicated to man, not only by way of law, but also by God's example. And just as Adam was invited into that communion with God, 
God also invites us week after week into that same communion with him. A communion that doesn't only enlighten us mentally, but it also enriches us spiritually and physically. And that's what I would like for us to remember today. That we are all invited into God's rest. So let us not lose that opportunity. In Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Gerald, would you like to pray, please, to close the discussion this evening? Heavenly Father, we are, again, so grateful of the short time that we've had to study your word. But we know that even in short times, wonderful things can be done. It only takes a spark, Lord, to set a fire going. And Lord, we are asking you that we can be those sparks. We pray for this ministry, that it will continue to share the word and bring it to many people. We thank you, Brother John, for your efforts each week. And we pray for everybody who is listening today and who continues to do so. That they will have a desire to know God, to know him better, to live a life in accordance with his will. And they will not neglect the opportunities to learn more about him, about you, Lord, day after day. As we do so, may we all take that march, that road that leads upward and ends at Jesus' feet. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brother Gerald, thank you for joining us in Voice of the Wilderness Internet Radio this evening. Listeners, if you have any questions, or if you would like more information, please send an email to inquiries at wildernesspublications.org. You can send a text message to 07944-062-786. If you live in the United Kingdom, please contact us with your name and address, and we will send you a free tract called Jesus Kept Saturday Holy. Do you? Those who are living outside the UK can request for an electronic version to be sent to them free. If you have the Android app for Voice in the Wilderness Internet Radio, go to the ebook section and find the title Bible Readings for the Home. At chapters 86 and 87, you will find the subjects, reasons for Sabbath keeping, and manner of observing the Sabbath. These will give you more information about today's topic. On next week's show, we will continue to discuss the question how do we enter into God's rest? Well, that's it for tonight's show. Until next week, good night and God bless. Voice in the Wilderness, Internet Radio. Enlightening the world every week. It's not just knowing about the doctrine in the Bible. That is not what we stand for here. Streaming powerful, biblically-based messages live and down the internet. This congregation may never be gathered together again as we see it. Voice in the Wilderness, Internet Radio. Enlightening the world every week.